Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. First of all, I want to apologize. I haven't had the time to upload some videos for the past few weeks because we've been busy preparing for today's event. So today's event is a esports event. It's organized by Acer uh, Predator. You guys might be familiar with some of their gaming laptops and the game that's going to be played is uh, Valorant. Uh, it's also sponsored by Intel and my team will be in charge of the multi-camera system and also for the streaming or broadcast. Now, um, part of the broadcast, we're going to be using some uh, AR graphics and we're actually going to be using Axymetry and the Mars cam track system for that. So I'm gonna show you guys uh, my entire setup and you know, hopefully it might be useful to some of you that might wanna use the same system to add AR to your production. Come on, let's check it out. All right, so here I am at the front of house and you know, this is where my broadcast team uh, is going to be. And I'm not gonna go through the entire broadcast setup because you know, that's like for an entire <laughs> different use. I'm just gonna focus on Aximetry and the Mars here. So over here is my station. This is where the Aximetry PC is. It is an i9 with an RDX 3090. And it is installed with a Blackmagic DeckLink SDI as its capture card for the in and out. So uh, basically, the Aximetry PC is going to be outputting the feed to the main camera switcher, which is over there. And for the camera that I'm going to be using for the AR is over there. All right, so for the camera here, I'm using a Panasonic Lumix BGH-1, which is a really affordable camera. I love this camera. It's small and it has gen lock, right? It's not a full frame camera, which is fine. It doesn't have a 4K SDI output cap capability, which is also fine because uh, all the cameras are feeding a, a full HD feed at 50p to the main video switcher. So as you can see, I've mounted the camera on a Shark robotic slider. So basically once the system is booted up, it's just for the entire duration of the event, it's just gonna go from right to left, right to left, nonstop, it's on a loop. So there won't be any camera operators on it. And we tested this thing yesterday for the entire day. It's pretty robust, uh, it didn't overheat or anything. And yeah, it's, it's working fine. So on top of it, as you can see, I have the Mars Rover and the Tracker. And for the base stations, I'm only using two base stations. Well, of course, because there's not that much space and basically the movement area is not that big. It's just like two meters, right? So two base stations is enough. Uh, it's pointing towards the camera, one on the right, one on the left. And also it's pointing a little bit to the floor because I'm going to be using another rover on the floor to uh, recenter so that uh, Aximetry and the system knows where the floor is. We haven't had any issues with the base stations because uh, I know sometimes if you, you know, if you point lights directly at it, uh, it sort of screws up. But so far we haven't had any issues even with the laser shows and whatnot. It's been working great. And the base stations and the rovers uh, lasted for the entire day yesterday. We booted up at mm, about nine a.m. in the morning and we finished at about uh, 11 p.m. at night. So it was on for the whole day and you know, nothing overheated. The Mars held up really, really well. All right, so I'm using a really, really wide lens here. It's a seven to 14 millimeter Mzuiko Pro uh, by Olympus. So it's, it's a micro four thirds. So it's equivalent to, uh, I don't know, 14 to 28 lens but uh, it's actually really wide. And if I had the choice of another lens, I would, it's actually too wide. Uh, so the problem with using these really wide lenses is that there's a lot of distortions. So even when you calibrate your lens uh, properly, either using the Aximetry uh, uh, calibration tool or the Mars calibration tool, uh, you still get a lot of distortion. So it makes it that much harder uh, for you to have an uh, accurate placement of your 3D objects for your augmented reality. So if I would have option of another lens, slightly less wide, I would, but you know, we're already in production day and all that. I can't be bothered to look for another lens. So we'll make do with it. <laughs> all right, so for the Genlock, I am using a Blackmagic Mini Converter Sync Generator and it's providing the uh, gen lock for the PC, the Mars unit, and the camera. All right, now I wanna talk a little bit about the setup that we need to do. Uh, as you can see, this room uh, isn't that 
big and there's going to be a lot of people here and there's going to be two teams competing versus each other. One team is going to sit on the left and one team is going to sit on the right. There are some LEDs in front of where the teams are going to be, but chances are once it's crowded, you won't be able to see the team names and so on. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted to use uh, AR graphics. We're going to show the team logos appear on top of uh, each of the team's locations, right? So what I had to do is take precise measurements of like where, you know, the zero of the tracking system is going to be, uh, the scene, the zero of the scene is going to be, and where the stage is going to be. So I had to measure that. It's like I think about nine to 10 meters. And you know, where the teams are going to sit, I had to take like accurate measurements of everything and recreate the set inside Unreal Engine with the same uh, dimensions. So then I would know where to, you know, make the logos appear and all that. Uh, I think a fun way of using AR is to make use of your environment. So for example, like uh, up top on the stage, you have the uh, Predator logo and I added some lightning effects, electricity effects, you know, like shocking the logo and all that. And so again, I had to take uh, measurements of where the logo is and I wanted the lightnings to appear from the logos on the left and on the right. So each of the side logos shocking the center logo. So I had to take measurements of the side logos as well and where it should um, target the uh, visual effects and all that. So basically, as long as you can measure everything, you can recreate your whole scene with an Unreal Engine and then add whatever you want. So inside Unreal Engine, uh, after I've taken the dimensions of the uh, real set, uh, it will look something a little like this. So as you can see, like this is my camera, this is my zero, zero, zero. This is like the center of my scene. And here, uh, here I have the logo of the Predator logo and it's around like 11 meters uh, away from my camera and it's about 5.5 meters uh, high. Uh, it's not super accurate because it's actually, you know, just as a reference and it's sort of floating in the air anyway. So it, I didn't have to be really, really precise. So unless you have something that's sticking to the ground or to the wall, uh, then you have to be super, super precise. And this. 3D object is not actually going to be showing in the AR, it's just there as reference. And I have some special effects uh, here on the sides. Uh, see, electricity, I'm gonna control Z, that will pop from the uh, sides. It will sh be shocking the logo, but it will be actually, you know, uh, because it's augmented reality the electricity VFX, it's going to be shocking the, uh, the real logo from the camera feed. And here I have some like uh, victory uh, 3D text, which, uh, you know, I can trigger them uh, on top of the winning team, right? And I also have the team logos here, like uh, ARF, Alter Ego, uh, Boomi Sports, these are all the Valorant teams that's going to be competing against each other. So here in Eximetry, as you can see, uh, I can set Team A here. So I can set it to Team 0, Team 1, Team 2, or Team 3. And then once I have the team that I want, I can just trigger it and it will animate in the team uh, logo that I want. And this one is for the one on the other side. So I don't have my camera turned on right now, but that's actually what we're gonna do next.
Okay, so we are done with today's event. Everything went smoothly. It was actually a very successful weekend with very minimum technical issues. And so that is how we use Eximetry and the Mars Cam Track system for our eSports live productions. So obviously the 3D graphics is not the star of the show. It's just a little something we add to, you know, add value and spice up our production. And uh, just in case some of you were, were wondering, like, is the Mars Cam Track able to, you know, be turned on for like long periods of time? Well, it is. It's powerful enough. Uh, it was on Friday when we were doing the testing for half a day. It was on the whole day Saturday and it was on for the whole day today. And I did not lose connection, not even once. The track was, you know, like it kept sending the data, you know, no glitches whatsoever. It worked smoothly, no overheating whatsoever. So if you're planning to look for a tracking system for your live production and you're planning to do long hours of streaming, try out the Mars Cam Track system. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.